y'all this is cindy i'm the tireless tangler i want to welcome you back to the 100 days of zentangle project 2021 thank you all so very much for being with me today and each day on this incredible journey we're on our tangle for today is going to be a fragment we are going to take a fragment and do one of our fragment zendalas which have both that we've done before turned out terrifically and as a resource today, I am using, uh, I finally went to Kindle and bought uh, the Kindle version for $10 of the Zentangle Primer Volume 1, worth the 10 bucks. If you, if you don't have the resources to buy the hardback version or the paperback version, then I highly recommend you get this one. I was just looking through there today and marveling at all the stuff that's good stuff that's in there. So uh, it's a great place to start your Zentangle journey. All right, so I'm gonna choose one of these to work with today, but first I'm gonna be working on a white Zendala tile. This is a Zentangle Zendala tile. I believe it is, let's not guess. Let's do the old measuring thing. I wanna say 4.9 inches let's see where's the zero oh, here it is four point i can't see four point yeah i think that's nine two three four five. yep let's call it four and nine whatever four and nine sixteenths or whatever it is well i didn't really get that in the center but still for 4.9 inches or let's be fair to the European people and the people that actually work with math <laughs> oh sometimes it is centimeters 11 point looks like 11.6 centimeters so oh I wanted to show you guys this this is my deckled ruler that I got from Amazon and I can't remember if I've got a link for this on my Amazon on my Amazon store or not, but it is made by Westcott, and it's got these weird, funky edges on it. And so the way you use that is you put that on your paper and tear your paper along the edge, and it helps to score it. Uh, so I have used it. It really, the success rate depends on the paper very much and uh, probably the thick paper that we use isn't going to work really well, but for a thinner paper, it might be an interesting choice. So anyway, I thought I'd show you that. Let's get started on our tile. So I have decided to start this by penciling in, and I just used a straight edge and sort of guesstimated on this, um, a cross in the center to help me sort of, kind of, I can tell I've got it a little bit off center, but it's not the end of the world. But I'm, I might shift it just a little bit, like over. Where's my straight edge? <laughs> this is my nail file. Nail files make great straight edges. Let's see, where is that? I don't know, let's see. Nope, I took a blip. That might be a better spot. So let's use that. Except for the dip in there. <laughs> All right. Be really careful if you race over your tile. That is a good way to get the tooth of your paper all upset. We don't want that. We want to be friends with our paper. All right. So that looks... <laughs> okay, so that looks all right. Not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set this up a bit like um, we did, hmm, a bit like we did uh, Daniel Lamoth's uh, Dream Catcher, which is to put in sort of an asterisk. It's always a challenge for me with all the spitting and stuff. Okay, so now we should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points. Perfect. All right, this one's probably too long. 
and we can make these whatever length we want. If the closer in we make them, uh, the tighter our center section is going to be. But what we're going to want is to um, to put a circle-like thing in there. So our middle section. And you don't have to pencil this in, it's really not necessary. We can do this with our ink pen. But our middle section is gonna be the only one that perhaps we don't use our fragment on. Now, um, I have chosen to use this fragment here. It's L2, it's L2, okay? This one right here, yeah? I've always thought that was interesting and fun. It will give us uh, some interesting shading opportunities, as well as being very much like Crescent Moon, and so that's something we have a lot of practice with. Okay, so let's figure this out. So I'm asking myself um, if I could vary somehow the um, fragment and use it in here. And so, so yes, there is definitely a way to do that. The question is, how do I want to do it? Um, I can point it to the side. So say, let's see, actually, if we have Okay, so let's do this. Okay. And then we're going to This is very much like the zinger and sprinkle we were doing last night. We just want to fit this in this little space that I have yet to ink, uh, because I'm not sure if I want to or not. And so then we're gonna put our little crescent moon in this hollow here. See, I just adapted it to our space. Who's a smart girl? Cindy's a smart girl. Don't get too excited, all right. Okay, so I'm just gonna repeat this in each one of these little pie shapes. And I will probably most certainly ink in all of these tiny spaces if I can see them well enough to do, to do that. I might have to save this kind of thing until after we're done and I can have a different lighting situation. Let's try it. Simba's feeling wiggly. He may or may not have a squirrel to chase today. We're gonna find out. Uh, so thanks to Chip for really appreciating the opportunity to sing with us today. Thanks, buddy. Woof to you, too. All right. Well, I added an extra one on that one. Don't ask me why. It just I just felt like it needed one. Okay, so it's a variation. <laughs> Simba. Let's wake, let's wake that squirrel up and get him moving so we can get over with it. I am always rushing his fun, aren't I? I just don't understand how important these things are. That's what the boys are always telling me. <laughs> I'm always, whoa, I'm always running their fun. Simba bear, Simba, let that squirrel go. Come home. It's time to come home. There, that's lovely. I'm. I, these look like those chips. What are those chips called? I used to eat them way back in like the 80s or 90s. Oh, it's some kind of horn name. What is? It, what are these called? Trumpets? No, that's not it. Somebody dropped me a comment. Tell me what chips these remind me of. I know you guys know what I'm talking about. They're made out of 
uh, maybe rice flour or maybe they're corn. Maybe they're corn. All right. So these aren't exactly even, but I don't think that's going to bother me. Not even a little bit. I'm just making a C shape. And then I'm putting that little uh, echo lines on there, sort of like a little hat. Just like we did yesterday in um, De Beer. It always amazes me when I can remember one. All that talk about the ad re video, and I still haven't gotten the new thumbnail um, uploaded yet. And I was thinking about it yesterday, but I didn't get it done. I've got a bunch of stuff that I am needing to do. Uh, some I've got some post adoption paperwork to get done, and um, all of it has been on hold. And I need to get my butt in gear. They're not going to wait forever. One's got kind of a wiggly hat, and that's okay. Oops. Got my little jerking friend going on today. I had a thought about why my videos aren't being automatically captioned, and I wonder if those are the videos where I, where I speak another language and if I've just confused the poor thing. I do not know, but I need to figure it out because at least I know last year I had someone with a hearing loss that uh, was depending on captions and I don't want to leave anyone out. And as a former interpreter for for the deaf, um, that's kind of a big issue for me. I, I really want that to happen. So, Simba, I need you to run the forest in just a minute, buddy. Let me have a minute to finish up. And you can go where the wild things are. I know you like that. All right, one more. Isn't this cute? Still waiting to hear what chips these are. I keep saying, wanting to say trumpet, but that bugles. Oh my God, I have the brain of a pea some days. They're called bugles. Do they still have these? sometimes eat chips but i i don't go to the store anymore so i forget about a bunch of stuff these are called bugles do they have these everywhere or is that just a u.s thing they're hollow inside we used to play around putting them on the ends of our fingers <laughs> ah kids it's a great time all right so uh, I think I may want to put an aura around this. Remember, auras are called tangle enhancers. And we call them that for a reason, because, you know, they enhance tangles. And this might give me an opportunity to sort of even some of these out. Hopefully, you know, a good opportunity and not one that I will destroy. Ah, looky there. The third opportunity. All right, so that's where I'm going to stop on this one, on this round, clearly. Let me see. I feel like this needs to be a little bigger. Oh, you know what I could... No, Sydney, no, leave it. All right. <laughs> Starting to get ideas, and you know that's dangerous for me. Okay. So now we need a second row here. So uh, the question is, can I draw that in in a way that will not uh, wreck this? <laughs> We're gonna find out, okay? So I'm gonna, um, you know, keep these sort of large so that I'm not really working in a tiny space. And uh, so I think I'll make this like this. And I think if I do these in quarters, <laughs> maybe, well, maybe not, but that's going to be okay. Thinking maybe I'd get them sort of even. Clearly that is not to be. 
but I'm gonna work with what I have and not freak out. All right, so uh, I'm gonna start by inking these cardinal directions, north, south, east, west. No, I didn't have to practice that before I came in. That just came out right. <laughs> All right, and then what I'm wanting are vaguely square shapes, okay? So if I divide this right here, we will have that, and we'll have twice as many spots as we did here. Um, that might work. We could probably fit three in on each side. But I think I'm gonna stick with two. The bigger the better, I always say. Now, now we get to decide what to do with our fragment. We can, <clears throat> we can set it up however we want to. If we, for example, let's see, this goes on the diagonal, so we could start here and work the hat in this direction, right? It would have to be a half circle from corner to corner or just inside the corner. And that might work. Now we could also um, turn it this way or rather this way. Um, It's the diagonal thing that's throwing me here. So I'm gonna stop worrying about my outcome because that's the mistake I'm making right now. I'm going to just choose a direction at random. I'm gonna go this way. And I'm going to make a slightly curved line just ahead, just slightly in front, probably not that slightly in front of my, um, and I went the wrong way. Uh, it's all right. Okay, I'm gonna stop talking and just draw. Maybe we'll get there faster. I had not meant to set this up this way, but as I was reading in the primer today, which was pretty cool, I have been through it many times, probably four or five, six times, and some lessons more, some less, and um, I just, I'm always amazed at the wealth of knowledge and the care that goes into this met method when I read that is just completely obvious. So not happy with the way that looks. So I'm gonna do a little, let's, uh, let's mirror this and go this way. This is still not gonna be the best thing for our little hats but it will give us something really bold and dramatic uh, coming the other direction. And this is the way we turned it, so this is the way we're gonna deal with it. And uh, in my, Simba, Simba, in my reading today, I went through the No Mistakes chapter in the Primer. That is such a beautiful chapter because it talks about the philosophy that they had when they created the No Mistakes idea not meaning that you don't make mistakes, but that your attitude about them has shifted or should shift, or that's sort of the goal. <coughs> Excuse me. And it was just so refreshing to be reminded, you know, that that the reasons that we do things in certain ways are, are still the reasons. Um, okay, so I'm gonna go this way here and sort of mirror. Okay. Tiny bit of inking between. We've only got one showing up there. Um, I don't know. I had hoped 
this wouldn't be so awkward, but I am not going to prejudge my result. In fact, I'm not going to worry about my result at all. The fact that this isn't going the way I had planned should tell me that I started with the wrong attitude anyway, because pre-planning is one of those things they want you to try to give away when you start uh, drawing Zentangles. They want you to not worry about your results. They want you to not plan them. They want you to let your pen guide you and sort of go with what they want. And, and as that's part of the no mistakes philosophy, um, it, it is freeing because if you're not planning something, then you can't possibly make a mistake. And uh, they said in there, you know, you might ask, well, you know, if I don't make the strokes right, then the pattern won't look right. And the question is, well, then what is the pattern supposed to look like? Because uh, we don't believe in pre-planning. So, you know, so you can't get the pattern wrong. And so maybe you have a different result, but that isn't not necessarily bad. And I was reminded by them once again, Rick and Maria, uh, by reading in there that, that um, Zentangle is is what you make it. It can be what you need for it to be. It's extraordinarily flexible. And, um, you know, they talk about not, you know, you don't want Zentangle to be a further stressor for you in your life. So we have enough of those stresses. We want Zentangle to, to relieve stress. Okay. Okay, mirror this. Not just really happy with how this worked, but that's okay. I need to learn to deal with unexpected results too, just like everybody else. And the more free we are with our expectations as far as um, what we want from life in general, the more able we are to roll with the flow, to deal with the unexpected. Unexpected outcomes are tough, but the more uh, free we are with our ability to deal with those, you will see that that will translate into everyday life as well, which is a beautiful thing. Okay. So I guess we know what I'm doing on the next row, right? <laughs> Well, we're gonna find out. I'm trying, and, and here I did not manage it, but I'm tr going to try to get these to sort of match. Well, okay, it's not gonna happen on this, but that's okay. I, I at least recognize that that's a possibility that I could have done, and maybe next time I try this, it will work. Low down, rotate your pen when you're inking so you're not wearing too much on one side. All right, and we're gonna go this way. Now, when working with fragments, sometimes what you have are, especially in this sort of uh, format, sometimes what you end up with is not what you expected. But again, instead of looking at it as a mistake, let's look at it as an opportunity to see this pattern or this fragment in this case a little bit differently, perhaps, than what we would have before. Okay, so these are all all over there, uneven, uh, and that kind of thing. So I'm asking myself right now, what could I do to sort of make this more interesting? Now, you know, the first thing that jumps to mind is I could continue to aura this the other direction, and that's certainly a choice. Um, but we could also change the direction of the lines. Uh, that we're using. And so we could put straight lines in going in the direction of our cardinal points. Yeah. And that's a possibility that might bring some interest there. Um, we could 
we could aura this whole section and make this into one and do some decorating or embellishing inside of that. I think I like the straight line idea, so I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna aura this line that comes out. I'm gonna try my best to keep the direction the same as I move across, and I'm gonna try to take my time so I don't get my pen encroaching past lines. <clears throat> Sorry, allergy season is killing me this year. I am having tons of problems with my throat and voice, and that just makes me nuts. I hate coughing and clearing my throat constantly, but it seems to be happening no matter what I do. Okay, so that makes it very interesting and sort of fills that out and leaves us without that blank space. Not that the blank space is bad. And we could just put color in there or uh, shade it with gray or something like that. That's certainly possible. And by putting the directionality at odds with everything else in these squares or square-like entities, uh, then we've also created some, some uh, interesting shading opportunities as well as some interesting visual uh, opportunities. Try to keep those pointed straight, as I did not do here. Keep your eye on this. See, I'm starting to slant, so keep it straight up and down. Okay, so the more, the further I go with this, the more sort of diamondy this is looking, but that's okay. It's all right with me. So I'm gonna pretty much do the same thing here. Again, with varying degrees of, of uh, success, I think, because this is a lot thicker than this one. Yes, we're getting steadily smaller, which is going to make this very interesting. Look at what I did there. Okay, so now I think I can divide this into uh, thirds. Let's see if we can visualize that in some way that's not wrong. And now we have something closer a bit closer to square-like. Again, they're not gonna be perfect. That's all right. We don't need perfection. We just need to know where we're at <laughs> at any given moment. And we're good to go. All right, now. So, we have the same options that we did the last round. Of course, having this section in is going to make our options here more interesting, I think. So um, now last time it was my intention to have the hat coming out up here, and I ended up going the wrong way with that. So I think that's what I'm gonna try, <laughs> and we're gonna find out what happens. like this. Okay. 
I loved hearing more about Chip and uh, Cassandra. And there is somebody's kitty that I met that I can't remember his name, but or her name. But I'm I'm going to have to look up the comment so that I can remind myself uh, who it is. All right, it's amazing. I remember them. I remember their the pet names better than I remember the people names. That's par for the course with me. All right, so I'm gonna once again mirror this. Remember, you can stretch or move the fragments around however you need to to fit in your space. So this one is going to look a little bit different than this one. That's all right. I'm choosing to stick with my 01 simply because of the mess I tend to make with PN. And when you're in some place like this and you're dealing with fine lines, then it's always nice to have a tool that won't get you into more trouble than you need. I like the bolder lines that the PN has, but um, my art likes the zero one better. I know some of you can understand that. All right, so let's mirror again. And just put his little hat on. Like that. Ink in the little interstices, the little spaces. See if I can do this without my hand jerking too much. It's not that I can't deal with it, it's just, it can be frustrating sometimes to put your pen down and have it go someplace else on its own without your permission. So rude. But if you shake like me or you have problems with uh, jerking uh, limbs and things like that, uh, whether it be seizures or epilepsy or uh, Parkinson's or whatever is going on uh, in your life, God bless you first. And second, take some deep breaths. Remember that this may be a part of our art that we have to learn to live with, but there is art after the shaking and the problems, guys. I promise you. There, there is. I'm here on YouTube. <laughs> if that doesn't tell you something, I don't know what will. I know there are people that suffer far worse with the shaking and jerking that I do right now. I am hoping that this is not something that will get worse, but I can tell that it does get worse. Um, I'll, you know, it is getting worse. And so um, that's a little scary. And so I know I'm not the only one that's scared about losing something that has come to mean so much to me. But I have seen a lot of other CZTs lose their ability to uh, draw themselves but still stay um, really vibrant in the community. And so I hope if I ever lose the ability to draw, I can still be an encouraging influence for others. Still teach what I know, you know, in some other way, maybe. I have to hire a hand. <laughs> Here, put a pin in this and do this. That might be an idea. If only Mari would be that hand, but I know he won't. He has trouble sitting still through all this, which is why he struggles at the live streams is why I was uh, shocked and so pleased the first one that he managed to get through it all. So it didn't surprise me that he gave up on us a few minutes early last time, but um, I appreciate the fact that he gets in there and tries and he does a good job. He does a really good job. So I'm pretty proud of him. All right. So this is different, definitely. And uh, I'm going to keep going. How are we doing on time? Pretty good. Pretty good. A uh, mirror, Cindy, mirror. Okay, 
Oops. Well, we're going to ink it now, aren't we? So if you were going to vary this fragment, how would you do that? Think about that. Go in your sketch pad and maybe maybe draw some examples of what you might want to do to vary this because I think in the next row we might have to try something out and I'm actually not sure what I want to do. So I might need some, some help from you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed De Beer yesterday. I, I, I can't, I can't tell you how much I love doing that kind of art. It fills my cup in a way that other uh, things like grid patterns and things like that just don't. And even if my tiles turn out great, I just don't receive the sort of emotional satisfaction from those that I do from making flowers. <laughs> what is it about making flowers and leaves and pretty stuff that just fills me so much? I know a lot of you feel the same and I know a lot of you do not. And neither way is right or wrong. They're just both different. And again, a good example of how Zentangle can adapt or be adapted to whatever it is you need from it. That's one of the most beautiful qualities I think that it has. All right, mirror. I think I'm gonna do this. That actually, that actually, actually sort of helps you see the pattern better, doesn't it? There. All right. Let's fill it in. I have to take a break here in just a minute. I have a meeting. change my ink pen. It's getting a little dry and no pens, no pens. And don't put that one in the box. <laughs> no, no zero five, Cindy. Ah, no, no brown. <laughs> Come on, no purple. Although I'm just kidding. Allison, you can get the, the purple microns in, in the assorted uh, colors packs from Sakura. Check on Amazon. I don't know that I have them in the zero ones, but I do have a set of PNs on there uh, that are in colors that has purple in it. And so uh, if you, if you um, just type in on the search bar, um, Micron zero one purple. You'll see what they have. And just take note that's on some of those packs. Uh, the colors can be changed up. Sakura has a lot more colors than we typically see here. And, uh, but they are a big deal in Japan. And so uh, they have all kinds of stuff that they offer that maybe we're not aware of. And so it never hurts to search and see what you find. And if all you find is something expensive, stick it in your cart, keep an eye on it. The prices change constantly.
River says hey to all her snoozy puppy pals. That is the loudest dog. I am getting more and more prepped for uh, obedience classes with her. She she makes me a little crazy. But I remind myself all the time when you when you take in rescues, you take in their problems. And rescues don't end up being rescues without problems. So, you know, it's sort of like a foster child. You understand and cope with the, with the issues that come your way. I don't believe in giving dog, dogs back because they have issues. <clears throat> we'll help her figure them out so that we can live as a happy family. Because that's what we want. And Simba will need training too because he's not handling her in a positive way either. Um, you know, nobody's getting hurt and that's my main concern. Uh, but the kids hate coming in the door because it's always getting charged and, and even Mari and I together can't keep the dogs corralled. Uh, you know, Simba wants to protect them and the river wants to lick them and that ends up being a snarl fest uh, in the front hall when people come in the door and I don't like that dynamic. I want uh, our home to be welcoming, uh, not, not a danger zone. So, um, yeah, that's the next thing. But let's get little Missy's teeth fixed next week first. Our surgery date is coming up. I need to figure out how to get that money. <laughs> yep, I do. And I'm excited to see what kind of doggy we have when we're done. She is such a sweet girl. I mean, considering that she's in pain all the time. She she has not offered to bite anyone. She's not mean about it, except kind of snarly with Simba. And, um, you know, poor Simba. He's been such a good boy. It's just when it comes to protecting the kids, he takes that job very seriously. And whether or not she is dominant to him, he is not letting her, he is not letting her endanger those kids. So I will be interested to see what the dog uh, trainers have to say about the dynamic that they have going on. They're both good babies. Just, you know, Simba is used to having this protect everybody job and, and it upsets him a lot when he can't do that. And, you know, I don't want to call him down for doing his job. And I'm not going to. But in the meantime, that causes other issues. Now it's going to be time to break out a new zero one here pretty soon. Baby, it's bath time. What? It is bath time. Could you please go get your bath out of the way? Thank you. No. Just one more piece of this. Does this look like? 
and owl eyes. Owl eyes, a pair of owl eyes. That's kind of cool. That, okay, Sam, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. Uh, okay, so let's do, I think I'm gonna put a, a narrow, not real narrow, but sort of a narrow, actually, I think I'm gonna put an aura line around this. Everybody write this day down. He only sighed and 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 stomped a little bit and no talking back. Oops. No talking back. No nothing. All right. It is time for my meeting. I'll be right back. All right, so the last thing I did was draw this little thin aura around. I realized when I put this uh, second row or third row in that I had not done anything to separate these two. Now, in this instance, this is gonna be okay, uh, but here we really could have used that separation, and I think I would have had a better result. So um, I'm going to, what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to add an aura line right here on the, let me make sure this is the right color, yep, <laughs> on the inside. Now it may not work all the way around. You may have to draw behind, but it's working pretty well for me. Maybe not that well. A little less well. <laughs> How many well jokes do you think we can get done this year? I'm guessing it's a whole bunch. All right. So that helps me out a little bit, don't you think? Okay. So the next thing, uh, I still want to switch this out. I don't know how I keep getting this pen because I keep getting interrupted. Let's try this one next. I need to mark that one. Ah, day 68. Dear. Hola, como estas usted? I'm practicing my Spanish. Don't tell me how bad it is. I already suspect. Okay. So I'm going to, again, do the same thing by drawing a, a wide line uh, between each quarter of this and again trying to you know make it decent okay I think I'm gonna oh sigh it's gonna be fine Cindy I almost restarted this video, chose a different um, fragment and then I realized that I was doing exactly what I've been preaching to you guys not to do. Uh, several things, in fact. One was prejudging my outcome. I definitely was prejudging. Um, and, and another thing I'm doing, or was doing, was um, looking for perfection before I was done. And uh, so I need to finish my tile, like I've taught you guys. And uh, I'm going to live with results, whether positive or negative, and I'm going to do my very best to make every stroke of the pen as good as I can make it. And if that's not perfect, all right, I can live with that. 
Okay. So uh, now I need to, I'm really tempted to shift this line a little bit, but uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and mark my cardinal directions again. And uh, I guess it's gonna be interesting what we come out with, or at least what I do. Hopefully you guys have, have um, a nice outcome for whatever fragment you've chosen. Okay, so let's see. I think then I will quarter this. So about halfway and then divide that in half. It's usually my best choice. Half. Approximately half. And half again. If nothing else, it will be an interesting result. It may be wonky and off-center and a little wiggly and crazy. But I am learning to embrace that part. All right, so these are a little bit smaller than what I've been using down here. <clears throat> I had been thinking of uh, sort of matching up between this row and this but I realized fairly early on that that wasn't going to work uh, simply by nature of how I'm dividing this. Um, so, what I'm thinking of doing now is turning this fragment on its side, if you will excuse that, and sort of changing it up a little bit. So uh, let me show you. I'm going to vary this and make it in a different way. So I'm going to, let me think this through. So most of these are kind of long this way. So I think what I'm going to do is start about here and draw in my first curved element. And then I'm going to put my little hat on. And I was considering making these smaller, but I think I'm just going to make them all uniform. Like this. And then I'll put my crescent moon section like this. Whatever is getting itchy. All right. And then aura that. Okay. So, um, I wish I had started that down a little bit further, but that's okay. It's all right. And uh, in Rick and Maria's, um, I spent a little too much time in the primer today, you can tell, uh, in the primer, in the no mistakes section, uh, they were talking about unintentional results and um, how sometimes those become something amazing. And this is literally how new tangles are born, or tangulations are born, is uh, by making a stroke that it was that was unintended, and then doing something with that. And so that's a little misshapen, but okay. So I'm going to do my best to put these in a in a similar place.
something like that. And now on these, I try really hard to take my time. They don't have to be perfect, but I still want to do my very best job. Oops. My very best job. I thank you, Nancy, for reminding me that I was getting critical of myself. And uh, I noticed that I tend to be that way a lot when I'm when I'm really tired. And uh, I, I sometimes need the reminder that, Cindy, you're being too negative. Keep your chin up. We love you. That, those kinds of messages are always timely with me. And so I appreciate you uh, reminding me of that. Thank you. And for everyone else, I will try to be less negative. And uh, hence the reading the no mistakes part in the, in the primer today. I needed to hear that message. Well, that was unintended, but okay. So there's no reason when you're playing with fragments that you can't mess, mess around with them a little bit, change them up, do something different Remember, and it says in the primer in this chapter that Zentangle celebrates your differences and really hopes that, that you will share them with the rest of the community because we want to learn from you. And that's a beautiful thing. It's not, it's not often that you find something that embraces um, sort of uh, creativity that is not its own if you will, uh, particularly in art, you know, generally speaking, they want you to do things their way and, or use their techniques or whatever. And while Zentangle certainly has some of that in there, as far as the techniques for um, tangling, they also really encourage creativity and branching out on your own. It's a big thing with them. And I love that part of the art form that, that they don't think it has to be only their way. After all, they didn't invent the tangles, right? The patterns were already there. They just put some names on them so that we knew uh, what we were talking about, sort of a point of reference. You know, now when we say crescent moon, you have a very clear idea of what we're talking about. And otherwise, we'd have to describe them every time, and that wouldn't be very efficient. So it's really, uh, naming the tangles is really more about uh, having a point of reference and a talking point uh, than it is about having, you know, inventing anything. Uh, that's why they don't bother trying to copyright any of the patterns, because, of course, they can't be copywritten. You can't copyright a pattern. What is copywritten for Zentangle is their method. The method that they use to teach this is is their baby. And I think they, they treat it with such love and care. And that's another thing that I really admire that they, they have not, um, you know, they've had offers from uh, places to purchase the method. And, you know, uh, they, they are extremely careful with their, with their property in this. They, um, you know, they've had, uh, people want them to, um, I don't know, do promotional things and that, and that type of thing, or use the art in one of their promotions for whatever. And they have, for the most part, uh, not allowed that because they want control. Because once you have done that with somebody, then they, they control that art, that piece of art. And they want to control their art. And that, I think, is a beautiful thing. Well, this is definitely an interesting take. <laughs> it almost looks like uh, Jody Genovese's uh, pattern tunnel vision, which um, I love. I, you guys know I love Jody's patterns. 
because she always has the best names. I remember last year we did her pattern excellent. And of course she spells that X-L-N-T because she's clever. And uh, we did that and I think it was like the next day or two days later. <laughs> Because I'd been going, I'd been calling it XLNT. <laughs> it took me two days after we did it before I realized uh, that she was being clever and it was pronounced excellent. I'm, I'm a little slow. That makes me, that makes me laugh every time I think about how slow I was on that. This was just last year too. So I always have to examine hers for, for play on words and play, you know what I mean? and that kind of thing because she is so clever and so um i always love jody's stuff she always makes me smile and this year we got cursing out of it i mean tank i mean what a great word to or phrase to add to our um what do we call it the zenthology no the uh zen morphology or whatever the the tangle the tangle terms that we use what the well should definitely be in there. To express dismay over unintended <laughs> results. What the well? <laughs> oh my God. If I thought everybody else had the same kind of wicked sense of humor I had, I would totally send that into Tangle Patterns. Now, Zentangle might appreciate it, but uh, I'm sure, I'm, I'm not sure about Linda. I can't, I can't quite get a read on her humor. And so I'm not sure how open she is to things like that. And so, you know, <laughs> but it still makes me giggle. I think it should be added, definitely. I'm gonna call Julie Willen tomorrow and say, Julie, my friend, what do you think? Or I should just post it in the certified Zentangle teacher thing on Facebook. I actually got on Facebook today, guys. I know. Even I am shocked. My posts haven't been going where I thought they were going. I thought I had posts going to my my Tireless Tangler page. And apparently they were going to my private profile. So I need to fix that on Instagram. When I post to Instagram, it automatically goes to my profile on Facebook. So I accepted a bunch of, like, 30 friend requests from you guys. At least I assume they're from you. Anytime I've got 55 mutual friends with somebody, I'm, I'm guessing I'm good to go. And some of them I had as many as 105 <laughs> mutual friends. So that makes me smile. I miss Art Club, I have to tell you. Um, talking about my my classes with any Oaken, but I think what I miss really is being in the Art Club Facebook group. I mean, I'm still in there, but I just I haven't been on to post in a long time. I it's it's a commitment in there because when you're in there, you really um, it's really a good idea to be posting on other people's arts um, on other people's art. Um, giving, um, you know, feedback or, or positive strokes or whatever it is that that person is needing. And um, I really miss that, that sense of community. And um, so I actually looked at the, the button for, um, <laughs> for adding a Facebook group. And in the end, I didn't push it. It was okay, though, because... I, I guess I'm not ready for that step, but it's okay. Maybe someday. I I think one of you volunteered to be a moderator for me, and I would I really appreciate that. Um, I would probably need you know at least four, a couple from each time zone, or at least each half of the world. So there was always somebody in there. Maybe not always. You guys know what I mean. I 
I always forget how close-knit a community you can create there, which is one of the positive, really wonderful things about Facebook. Um, you know, I make it sound like it's awful, but it's really not awful. It's just, it's just that it tends to suck me in and I lose focus on what I'm supposed to be doing. And the next thing I know, hours have passed, hours. And, I, and my day is gone and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing anymore because I'm completely, it's sort of like Mari and YouTube, you know? <laughs> Sorry, I've got uh, comments from you guys popping up and, and um, while I'm recording this, I've got my phone sitting here. And I can see the, the comments popping up from today's video. And uh, so sh shout out to Barbara, who's new. And uh, I can't wait to read your the rest of your comment. I caught part of it, but I didn't, uh, didn't get it all. We'll see. I've been enjoying learning more about Cassandra, the kitty. Allison says she's definitely the queen of her castle. And rightly so. River thinks she's the queen, but she, she is sadly mistaken on that. I am the queen. She can be the princess, but I'm the queen. And it's gonna stay that way because she's a little bit nutty. So this is definitely not the result I was looking for, but um, it's interesting. And so I'm gonna keep going. I, mean, I suppose I could change it up halfway, but why? Why? That would require thought on my part. And uh, I'm finding that tonight, I am not so into the thinking. So we're probably in Ender territory now. So, Enders, I want you to know that um, over the next week or so, uh, I may put up some live streams in the afternoon around two when I normally um, when I normally release these, and uh, I will probably try to do them on my own, uh, at least uh, if I do them spur of the moment. So, um, if you are one that comes by and checks around uh, 2 o'clock or whatever time you are used to me releasing these videos, and I know I've switched it a lot, so if you don't know when that is, I don't know either. It's the, it's the same time as we have been doing the live streams, so it would be 8 a.m. the next day in New Zealand, and um, it would be 4 p.m. in California, and... Uh, 1 p.m. on the East Coast and uh, 8 or 9 p.m. in Europe or maybe 10. I don't know. We've gone to daylight savings time since we've done this. And so I'm not sure uh, how that has affected the time code with the UTC. So um, I will try to do, do some checking. But double check because uh, we are in central daylight time now. Um, don't ask me why we do that when the west, rest of the world just deals with the light the way that it is. I know they put that t uh, in place for the school children, and since that does affect them, I, I get it. But somehow school children everywhere else manage to get to school without changing the whole time for the country, so I don't know. I don't know how they managed to come up with that and make it work across three different time zones. But um, yeah, I'm glad that wasn't my math. <laughs> There's no telling where we would be today. Well, 
I did say we were going to have some shading opportunities. This was not at all what I had in mind. <laughs> but it is what it is. Wow. This is definitely a variation. And not my favorite. One of the things I like about this fragment is that it's kind of elegant looking. And I have uh, caused it to be rather clumpy or... Um, sort of rough and I, I just feel like what I've done here sort of lost my uh, the elegance of it and so I'm not pleased with it but that doesn't mean that we won't get a decent result I'm not going to judge this is part of the ugly phase and all art has one and he has taught me and um, I have to power through and see what we end up with at the end and then if I hate it I can stomp my foot and go home and cry, which I'm not going to because I've grown out of that. <laughs> but sometimes it sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Well, okay. Well, <laughs> It's going to be interesting. All right. Continuing. Funny how your results improve when you're making the same stroke over and over, isn't it? All right. Now... He said, don't bother me, I'm sleeping. Yes, I think that's why I'm talking to you, buddy. And of course, you don't have to ink this part if you don't want to. I just love that um, part because it, it's such a crescent moon thing. But if you're struggling with this, and why wouldn't you? Because, you know, um, try repeating your strokes across the squares and see if that helps you. All right. Still blowing hard outside. River has discovered her bone, so I'm sure we will be sharing that sound with her. I will be so glad to get her teeth fixed. I will I I worry about her constantly. I feel bad. I need, I need that stress off me. And it's hard to correct behavior when the behavior is brought on by something being wrong. So, you know, it's a waiting game. One of the things I need to do tomorrow is make some calls. Make sure we've got everything in place. What day is is the 12th? Is that Tuesday? Hopefully it's not Monday. I don't know if I'm gonna be ready by then. Simba, all right. Goodness, River. 
She's not even in the room with me. Hopefully, when she's done, she will be very clean. <laughs> Timba, quit moving, bud. Wow, I think that was my best one so far. I managed to get that mostly even. Sweet. Well done, Cindy, well done. Oops, I think I've forgotten some things. if we can get finished here. This one, of course, is not going to be even. And I'm going to love it anyway. Well, they've got a helicopter flying tonight. I wonder if it's heading over to the airport near me. As much as I don't like filling uh, places with ink, or especially lots of places with ink, um, you can't deny that this the ink brings a tile a ton of drama. And so, you know, I find myself avoiding some of the um, grid patterns on tangle patterns simply because they have a lot of inking involved, and I just don't know if I have the patience for it. Plus, I'm not the cleanest inker there is, and which is okay. I just recognize that that's one of my uh, weaknesses, if you will. So, um, okay. So I think I'm going to get my PN out here, and I'm going to sort of uh, repair this line around the edge in that um, I want to make it all about the same um, width and, and uh, darkness. And so I'm going to see if I can't uh, sort of even this whole thing out a little bit. No promises. All right, but I do like, I do like the inked edge. Let's just try not to make it too inked. Cindy. This whole thing is uneven and inking anything isn't going to change that. I need to just calm down. Try to keep it nice and smooth and consistent.
Okay. Um, I'm just not going to worry about that. I'm just going to ink it like it's intentional and not worry. This one's got one the same way. They'll look like each other, so that's fine. Okay, so uh, not at all straight and not at all even. However, uh, I like the look. <laughs> but then it's me, so that's okay. So now I'm going to, again with my PN, I'm going to add another um, aura around here and uh, try to keep it kind of close. We'll see. Okay, so, uh, and now, I'm trying to decide, I sort of had something in mind, but because I'm sort of short on room over here, I'm not sure it's the best choice. So, um, I'm going to take my PN down in here and um, add a little bit of line weight. Um, on the inside of this one, just a little bit. Try really hard not to get into my arid space there. But I kind of want to sort of emphasize this overlap or where I want it to look like overlap. And some of those spots where it's a little awkward will just go away. Or oh, that's my goal. Okay. I think I got that. Now I'm going to do the same thing here. Um, I'm going to try to do that on the inside track. Let's see how that goes. And that's what I was worried about with the pen. And we can use the jelly roll and I may 
I won't rule it out. Doing exercises like this don't have to do, be perfect, but working with fragments is something that can teach us so much. And you will find that a lot of the fragments listed in the Zentangle Primer are, um, are actually t tangles with names. Um, but, and calling them fragments is an important thing because um, I think they want you to look at them in a new light. Uh, look at them at how we can change them up and use them differently. So, um, you know, whether you like your results or not, Cindy, um, we're going to learn something from this, learn something important. Okay, I think that's as far as I want to go with line weight. Although this does present me with uh, some more interesting shading opportunities. Now, I'm going to hang up my ink pen for a minute because I still don't know what I'm going to do on the outer edge here. Um, and that's okay. Uh, I don't have to know yet. <laughs> it doesn't even have to be there uh, for the video to get finished. I'll just show you the end result if that's where we end up. Okay. So um, what? let's do some shading just for a little bit. I did locate my, my dear F pencil or at least one of them nice and sharp. So uh, I want to work from the center out so I won't be scrubbing across here hopefully. And so uh, on each layer, and this is why uh, I should have put down this this aura in here, but of course it was too late then. We want to shade on the outside so that we have some separation uh, between each section. This will pop this part up on top, make it look like it's on top. And drop this next section back behind it. Okay. And then um, the other thing I want to shade in here, and again, uh, normally I would shade the large elements and then go back for the individual, but because I don't want to be scrubbing across this and, and it'll probably be a lot of graphite, I'm going to go ahead, I'm trying to decide whether shade in between or to one side. I've always been taught to one side, so I'm going to pick a side. Look at me, I'm shading on the right. That doesn't happen. Maybe I've got something weird going on in my head. I've switched to my right brain or something. Or maybe it's my left brain that's in charge. I don't know. But shading between these or on one side is going to sort of pillow them up, round them a bit. There we go. Okay. So next, I want to look at this next row. And I'm going to, once again, shade on the inside so that it looks like uh, this section is dropped down behind. Actually, I should be shading on the outside, but I don't want to. This makes more sense to me the way it looks. Uh, I probably will regret that, but I don't care. It's mine. I can do what I want, so this is what I want. And whether it's wrong or not, wait. I always tell you guys, you can't get it wrong. So it can't be wrong. It's just my way. It might not make any sense, but uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, so now I think I also want to shade against this line here. I don't know what this is going to do, but we're going to blend it here in a minute and find out. It'll be fun and interesting. 
You know what I want to do with this fragment all of a sudden? I want to change the black ink, the ink, black ink to a color. Ooh, wouldn't this be cool with a, like a dark blue or, ooh, a green, a nice green would go good on here too. This is going to have so much graphite on it that it's going to be okay. Okay, so next row, I'm going to shade on the inside again. Just because I want to and it makes more sense to me. I'm going to try to stop putting it all over the black, but it's kind of hard to do in this situation. So we'll probably have some shiny going on there. Let me give it a nice dark coat. Somebody asked me if they couldn't if they couldn't find the F pencil, what other pencil they should use. I think if I didn't have F, I would just go ahead and use the 2B pencil, the regular, just the regular old school pencils, um, or the HB, I suppose, if that's a thing. But um, I think um, maybe it was Anne that said that even the F pencil was too much graphite for her, and so she went back to an H pencil, which I think is one of the harder ones, or maybe the most hard, I'm not sure. Um, but um, that's also a choice. An H pencil uh, is also a, a choice. So, you know, each person is going to be different. And so it's really important to just find what works for you. And if you're not sure, you can get one of those uh, inexpensive pencil sets that has, um, you know, everything from a, um, from a, you know, HH or a 2H or whatever to, to um, an 8B. And so then you have a complete range of pencils. Okay, I guess I just decided to shade both sides of this. River. This is not the thing I want people to go home and listen to at night, girl. Can we stop? River. River. No, we're not stopping, huh? Oh, goodness. Well, it's a good thing y'all all have pets laying on your feet or in your lap or whatever. Thank goodness for feet layers. Good job, Simba. Good job. Mm -hmm. So at some point, these are gonna become large enough to where you might wanna add a little graphite on each side of your little crescent moon right here. Again, this is becoming a lot of graphite. And uh, Mr. Mono Zero has gone missing again. I'm sure I know where he is. I just, oh wait, I know where he is. Ha <laughs> ha. Good for me. So since I know where he is, he's gonna be making an appearance. Oh good, she stopped licking long enough to eat. <laughs> All the fur babies. What would we do without them? Well, somebody said they probably wouldn't get out of bed, and I'm telling you, that's the truth for me, too. If I didn't have the dogs and the kid, I would not get out of bed every morning. Wait, <laughs> I usually don't. You know what I mean. I would not want to wake up. I, I need something to care for in order for me to be whole. And so I certainly have that in spades now. 
I love my babies, the two-legged and the four-legged. I love them all. So when I add graphite to the edges here, I'm just trying to really encourage that feeling of roundness that that my lines did not manage to, to share. So um, nothing wrong with that. That's what shading is for, for you know, umphing things up, making them more exciting or interesting, giving them more dimensionality. But wow, I'm using a lot of graphite. Can't seem to stop. All right. And I will tell you that on this outer edge here, I am probably going to treat this very similarly by, by really uh, getting after the shading on each side. Difficult not to get on the graphite and still get a nice good shade on there. Where's my tortillon? Okay, so let's look at this. See what we end up with when it's blended out. All right. I know you guys don't see the shading very well, but let me finish up here and we will get that. Well, I got too much graphite on that, but hmm. Way too much graphite. But I think this is, um, this is sort of the direction I'm gonna go. I will definitely be lifting some out because I can't seem to help myself with graphite. But this is what I'm after is the dark shading to each side and the highlight in the middle. You just have to really be careful how much uh, graphite you drag into the, towards the middle, which is part of it. But that's where that mono zero is really nice. It completely changes the dynamics of that, doesn't it? At least in my eyes it does. Okay, so that's how I'm going to do this. I forgot to do those, didn't I? Right. Let's fix all that up. <laughs> and then this one, again, a lot of graphite in here. When I didn't shade these, did I? Well, that that inner track, this one is a little awkward, but I think once we get all the shading blended and uh, sort of fix up some spots with the mono zero, I think we're gonna be all right. Um, well. Again, mono zero. <laughs> then 
the heavy shader's best friend. Okay, so this is sort of, let me lift this and give you, this is sort of uh, where I'm heading with this, and I will probably put something around the edge to sort of decorate up. Maybe I will put um, Crescent Moon just with one aura along the outside, so... and sort of make it uh, look lacy. I don't know if you can see that at all, but yeah, anyway. So uh, that's probably what I'm going to do. Now, I will be honest with you, this is way, way, way not my favorite thing. Um, really not my favorite thing, but I made a commitment to finish this tile, so I am going to finish it. I will be using it uh, for my thumbnail, and uh, we're going to see how it turns out. So I'm not going to prejudge this. I'm not even even close to finished with shading. So I'm going to get after that and uh, see what happens, but this is where I'm going to leave you today. Uh, this video ended up being incredibly long. So um, I'm going to see you guys tomorrow. I can't wait to see what you guys have come up with. I'm going to have to make some time to get on Instagram soon because I'm getting behind. All right, guys, thank you so much for being with me today, and I am going to see you all tomorrow.